Hello everyone. Spring season is upon us and so are those crazy annoying allergies. So today we're talking about whether or not those cleaning products that we keep using to spring clean our house are aggravating our allergies, if it's worth the change and if that will make any difference. So this is going to be an amazing episode for everyone to know. But before we get into this amazing content. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Anna Hill, and I am a headshots photographer and video producer. And what that means is that I can create amazing looking videos for you or help you create it yourself and your audience. Now, without further ado, let me introduce you to my guest, Chris Williams, and he is a health educator concentrating on non-toxic products. Hello, Chris. Man, I am sitting here with the Oprah of Facebook. This is Oh, great. snap. <laughs> How are you doing? I love it. How are you? Thank you so much for being here, Chris. Absolutely. Yes, and listen, I, you were scheduled to come to come this week. However, right? It is you were meant to do the entire thing. You're meant to yeah. discover everything about non-toxic products. So thank you so much for stepping up and like, you know, just coming and doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime. Yes. Yes. All right, Chris. So before we get started, can you please share your background with us? Yeah. So my name is Chris Williams. Uh, my wife is Dr. Tamara Williams, and uh, we reside in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, I'm a corporate executive trainer by day. Uh, helping executives all across uh, the financial services market. Uh, on the side outside of that, what I would call my heart job and my passion job is to really help people with their health and wellness education. Um, a lot of it started with me and we'll hop into more about it later of my story, but uh, serious asthmatic since I was a kid, I used to wear the Red Cross wristband, the whole nine yards, mm. constantly in and out of hospitals and, uh, at a certain point in my life, and we'll talk about it later, but was just really able to figure out where my triggers were coming from. When I was able to lessen those triggers, my life was able to take off. I've been able to drop 65 pounds, get in the best shape of my life. Lots of good things happened, but sometimes it's the small tweaks that we make that mm -hmm. make the largest difference. So we'll cover some of that today. For sure. That's a, well, congratulations. That is a great achievement. Not only the losing weight part, but the part of figuring out what it was that was causing that. Cause that is, you know, that is, that is a challenge right there trying to find out cause narrowing down all these things. Cause I mean, it could be anything in like you're saying, we, we will get into it a little bit, how you did it, but yes, that's amazing. All right. So, um, okay, Chris, so talk to us, let's take it to how, since we're talking about that, how, did you figure it out, like pinpoint exactly what it was that was causing this, um, your, yeah, your so, asthma and stuff? Um, wow. 2016, I had my seventh near death experience from asthma. Um, almost died from an asthma attack in my sleep. Mm. And I was rushed to the hospital. Uh, by the time I got to the hospital, I had zero oxygen in my blood. All I remember was passing out my wife. When I woke up, she's there. My two boys are there. And my wife told me, she said, hey, I just want you to know the nurse called me and told me I need to get here quick. And the fact that you were minutes from not making it. Wow. And but what what caused it though? Like what didn't you have like your, you know, your, your asthma medicine yeah. and things like that? So I had gone home, we had uh, gone to church. I had gone home and said I was gonna clean. This was prior to us getting married. I, we had left church, I went home and I said, hey, I'm just gonna clean the house real quick and let's get together and go eat. She said, fine. So we, this is, this is a wild situation and, and some no-nos I would say, but I just went home and cleaned with the regular grocery store cleaning products that I always use because I'm a cleaner, I like cleaning, I don't mind doing that. Um, and I just took a nap. Well, what I didn't realize was the toxin, toxic chemicals inside of that shortens breath, uh, causes irritants to exacerbate your already pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. and I was having a full-blown asthma attack in my sleep. When I woke so, up, tried oh. my inhaler, it didn't work. 
tried my nebulizer. It didn't work. And I panicked. Now, the thing I shouldn't have done was what I did. <laughs> I drove myself to the hospital. Oh, Jesus, Lord. Okay. My how <laughs> wait but you couldn't breathe chris like what were you I doing did. you know what that's probably because you weren't getting oxygen in your brain so you couldn't think okay okay that's that's a fair statement i promise you that <laughs> i love it okay so so then all right so then you went to the and then all of that so what happened after that did you, how do you pinpoint it and can you tell like what what was the product because you know what was the product that you used? Did... Yeah. So um, my wife is is an entrepreneur. My wife owns a digital marketing firm. And one of the things that my wife is really good at is when she gets her mind on something, it's, it's going to get done. And she's not going to stop until she figures it out. And okay. basically my wife was like, look, you're not dying early. <laughs> you definitely ain't dying before you're married. <laughs> she's like, we still, we still haven't gotten married, so right. you, you can die. <laughs> So we're going to figure this out. So we, I mean, turned over everything. We tried to figure out, was it the stress from my job and me traveling? Was it like, what was it? What it came down to was an article that we read that talked about the dangers of toxic chemicals and how those chemicals are being linked to things like asthma, allergies, ADD, ADHD, nervous disorders, uh, birth defects in women, a whole host of things. And what, mm -hmm. what I didn't realize was, wait a second, you mean to tell me what I use in my house that I clean with every day is contributing to this stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, here's the funny part. Most people know that if I'm using a uh, bleach, right. Mm -hmm. clean my bathroom, if you turn the bottle over, it actually says use only in well ventilated areas. Mm -hmm. Whose bathroom is well ventilated. Right. Most people are using gloves. Most people have to run out before you pass out, mm -hmm. right? But you have to think about what is that potentially doing, though, as I'm inhaling these toxic fumes? Right. How is that hurting my lungs? How is that hurting my skin, which is your largest organ, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Over time, what am I doing to my body? Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And that's what we figured out. We found out that the toxicity inside of the cleaning products I was using is so high that for an asthmatic, that's just, I'm asking for trouble every time I clean my house. Right. right? Who might not be an asthmatic who's using it, what they're doing is they're actually singeing their lungs up, up potentially, you're causing erosion of your skin because you're constantly using these harsh abrasives and quaternary disinfectants. M most people don't realize things like um, window cleaners have ammonia in it. Oh my gosh, ammonia yeah, I cannot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So that's what we figured out. We started realizing it was it was my triggers. Yes, you can have seasonal issues, and that's one thing. But even those can be brought down when you reduce the amount of toxicity in your home. Mm -hmm. And there are also times where um, people are just allergic to the home, like the dust, and I don't know, like correct me, dust you know, with the right or, term. Um, yeah. Yeah, all of that. All of those things are are factors when it comes to um, people's issues with allergies or any of those things. All of those play a part in how you suffer, how long you suffer, <laughs> mm. um, and yeah. what type of impact that, that it has on your body. Mm -hmm. And 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 you mentioned um, of, of screen that the pandemic had brought up. Like a lot of like has aggravated all the symptoms that we have if we had pre-existing conditions, right? Because of all the cleaning that we were doing right, yeah. with these products. And these products went off the shelf. I mean, like people just bought all of them, right? right. So, oh my gosh. Is, is there one specific ingredient in there that we should just stay away from if we, you know, like that we just like, you know what, definitely don't use this one. Um, so there's one ingredient that's in a lot of cleaning products, and I'm going to mention it. And some of you may have heard of it before, but probably don't know about it. It's called formaldehyde. Now, mm. formaldehyde is actually a embalming fluid. It's used on dead people when we die so that we look okay when we get to the funeral. Sorry to be so graphic, but that's... Well, wait, so what does that do to the cleaning product? Okay, so if they use it on dead people, that means it cleans really well? 
<laughs> well, here's what that ingredient is used in cleaning products for. It's used as a preservative. I want you to think about if I pump something inside of a dead person and they last to the funeral, it's classified as a preservative. Okay. So that preservative is also in tons of cleaning products. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it has to last long enough to either one, be made to preserve the compounds and three, last long enough to sit on a shelf for you and I and go buy it. Here's the thing. In most grocery store chains, a product is anywhere between three months and three years old that's sitting on a shelf. Mm -hmm. So the longer you're buying a toxic product or however long it sat there, right? What you're doing is you don't realize things like formaldehyde, things like ammonia, things like hydrosodium, hydrosodium chlorate, things, quaternary disinfectants, uh, acids, abrasives, all of these things, you'll see them on the back of, you know, lots of different grocery store brand cleaning products. Mm -hmm. Do they work? Absolutely. Are they good for your health long term? I beg to differ. Right. Right. I mean, like I had my my uh, my mom's husband, he loves like you, I assume, because you just mentioned a couple of times that you love cleaning. Right. He loves cleaning. And unless the house smelled like cleaning products, the house wasn't clean. Right. So, right? So he, it was, it was insane. So he used bleach for everything, for laundry, for the kitchen, for, so the house was just, you know, bleach. It was crazy, right? But he got sick. He got asthma and he did, it wasn't born with it or anything like that. So he got asthma and he got sick a couple of times. He was hospitalized because of his lungs not functioning well. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, that's what they said. They said the cleaning products, like the doctor said this. And, and here's, I think the thing that we're all creatures of habit. Listen, I grew up in a house when we went to grandmother's house and helped do the dishes. Of course, she poured a little bleach inside of the cleaning dishwater. Right. <laughs> but here's what I want you to know. The New York times in April of 2020 dropped an article that showed accidental poisonings increased by over 20%. The poison control were getting more phone calls and people were being hospitalized. And what they noticed was, it wasn't coronavirus, it was accidental poisonings. Here's a simple one. You take hot water, pour chlorine bleach inside of that water. Ladies and gentlemen, that releases chlorine gas. Mm. I'm sorry, that's not what we're supposed to be inhaling. Secondly, none of us would give our babies, nieces, nephews, anyone a glass of bleach to drink. That mm -hmm. would just be sick. But we don't mind putting a bleach baby wipe on them. We don't mind bleaching down the whole house. We don't mind having it in uh, on our dishes and you eat off of your dishes. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why sometimes Right. We can't seem to get rid of certain colds, certain like, right. Think things linger a long time. It's because mm -hmm. this overuse of these chemicals are exacerbating some basic problems. Your body is designed to, if you get an irritant, get rid of it through cold right. and mute and everything else. But it's not supposed to last a month. It's mm -hmm. not supposed to cause right. you to take days off because you can't breathe. That's not supposed to happen. But because we've gotten so used to just, like you said, everything has to smell like bleach before we can right. it. It's it's problematic long term. Yeah, it is, and then and then that and that's just the cleaning aspect of things, right? We're not even um, talking about shampoo, lotions, the the candles that we that we you know light around the house and smell good. When we're, we're so when we add all of that, we yeah. are living in a very toxic uh, environment. Right. You know, it's funny you mentioned candles and things like that. So mm -hmm. some of us are used to going to certain brand stores and buying all the candles and the plug-ins and all those things. And I think those are great. What we forget though is there's some people around us who can no longer use those plug-ins anymore. Mm. Who can no longer take that scent that you were used to. Here's a test I want everybody to go run. Next time you burn a candle from a store that you bought it from, if you notice that the, the glass turns black, ladies and gentlemen, it's burning formaldehyde. 
Well, most black. of the, I'm just thinking, like, most of the candles burn black. Isn't that from the flame? They're not supposed to burn black. If they're using natural stuff, that's not supposed to happen, right? But what happens is, is we pump them full of fillers, uh, chemical, you know, scents, right? Like, unless they use the real orange, that's not orange scent. That's chemically altered scent to make it smell like orange to the human nose. Understood. Right? Yes. Um, a lot of these product companies even do brain tests because what they want to see is what triggers that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Based on the scent, based on the sound, you know, all right. the different things. Right? Mm -hmm. And so people just have to be mindful. Like, again, it's not what you do one time to your body that's going to cause a problem. It's what you do over and over and over again that makes the your latter years a lot more suffering because you're on more medications and mm. you can't enjoy it because you've been exposing your body the first half of your life to God knows how many chemicals right. every single day and your body's been working overtime. Yeah, I mean, that's scary. There was one statistic that I found that it said that the average home has 50 times the level of chemical exposure that the o o occupational safety and health administration defines as standard Absolutely. and i can I, I mean right would you say chris that that's correct i would say so and i would also think about your place of business i mean there's offices now that have banned lysol start mm. asking why why? I'm just saying, <laughs> like at the end of the day, it, it's not, and again, I'm not knocking companies and I'm not here to do that. And I'm not, listen, I'm not that kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I am saying for me who suffered as an asthmatic, uh, for my wife and my, 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 my son who had very bad cases of eczema on his face and lower back. And we were able to get rid of that in 30 days mm -hmm. by just reducing what we were using. Like with my son, we would always see it. We'd see his eczema and, you know, parts that fold, right? His face, his lower back. What did we realize? We realized the laundry detergent we were using was full of formaldehyde, chlorine, and all these other, you know, toxic chemicals. Well, if you removed using those brands and that harsh chemicals, the skin would actually heal itself. And if you put something on the skin that actually removes the bacterial infection, because that's all eczema and psoriasis is, then you don't have those problems anymore. Mm. But, you know, again, we we're so we're just we're just ha creatures of habit, right? Right, and right. Sometimes it takes our babies suffering before we as adults wake up and go, maybe I should do something different. Right, right. and that was and that was why you know the, the the question was, is it you know is it worth changing because we are creatures of, of habit, but if we don't find that, you know, that it's like you know what, that it's worth the change. We're not going to do it because we're going to go fall back into this habit of like, okay, I, I missed the scent or I missed the way this cleaned or whatnot, <laughs> you know, it, it, we will. Like I, <laughs> Marketing does a very good job. Oh, okay. for sure. Marketing makes us think we're better, they're not. And what, and <laughs> what I would caution people on is, you know, first of all, there's more than one way to do anything. And just because um, this one is not full of scent that's artificially and chemically created, by the way, mm -hmm. doesn't mean this product doesn't clean as effective, if not better. Right. Because clean doesn't always, like, I think the thing is, is like, people know, again, you wouldn't drink bleach. Right. But yet we have no problem putting it all over our hands, all over our clothes, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of which you wash your clothes in bleach, then you dry that bleach on your clothes and you wear it. Right. And, just saying, and, by the way, because your skin is your largest organ, your skin mm -hmm. is breathing just like your lungs. Right. So mm -hmm. you're basically suffocating your skin, thus the irritations continue. Yeah, I mean, and, and it does, and it does make sense. There's some people there who smell like downy, and they do feel like that's good. And whenever I've, like, it's usually right, it's usually a male. I'm sorry, you guys. I do, I do love you guys. Are awesome, but sometimes you guys smell like downy, and and they go on like, hey, hi, and I'm like, no, like I know, <laughs> like no, right? <laughs> because because as a guy, when I was single. Look, I knew what products I was going to the grocery store to get to clean with because they were the same ones that I grew up on, right? Do you whatever. smell like Downy Chris when you met your wife? 
Uh, I was a Tide guy. I was. <laughs> I, I was a, I still, so you didn't put fabric softener in it? Yeah, no little fabric, you know, low. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I was that guy, uh, and I didn't even. I don't know. Well, yeah, I did a few plugins, but I was the kind of person, though, unfortunately, that eventually I couldn't take them because I kept getting headaches. Mm. Mm-hmm. And what people don't realize is the body is not lying to you. Right. Yeah. I just, I just always want people to think about that. If your body is sending off signals of headache, fatigue, irritation. Your body's telling you something and it's our job to pay attention to what our bodies are saying and find out the source and just remove it. Listen, I love uh, red meat. Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to lose the 65 pounds by continuing to stuff this body full of red meat every day. Right. I'm, mm-hmm. I had to let go of some stuff for a while so I could reach my ultimate goal, right? Yes. It doesn't mean I don't understand. Uh, Dion Cole, the comedian, has this great line about meat, and he talks about, you know what it tastes like. You've been eating it all your life. Stop eating it. And that's always <laughs> his line. But the, the key is, when I was ready to lose weight, mm-hmm. I knew what my problems were. I just had to make the decision to say, I'm no longer going to do that, and I'm going to focus over here and reach my goal. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things for our own personal health, I will I will say 2020, 2019 and 2020 were terrible. But the one thing I will say for all of us who put our own personal health like low on our priority totem pole, it became number one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was a good thing that came out of the pandemic. I think that's a good thing that all of us now are going. I don't want to repeat that. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to see us suffer again. I don't want my own household to suffer. So what can I be doing to make sure that my immune system is boosted on a continuous level? And it doesn't mean that you have to eat dirt every day. Right. That's not, that's not real. I mean, like healthy food, it tastes good if you do it right. You know, but it's, Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people think that it's not, you know, like you can't dress it up very nicely. You know, you can't eat healthy food and still i mean salmon and fish and shrimp and you yeah. know you, all of these things are good yes. you know so and the funny thing about the food is is we all have to remember um the seasonings and things that we put on food are meant to bring you back over and over and over again i would it's an additive someone, yeah they're a little addictive right mm-hmm. Your favorite seasoning, your favorite this, your favorite that. They're meant to do that. Mm-hmm. But I always tell people, just turn the label over. Mm-hmm. Just, that's all I'm asking, when it comes, especially when it comes to your cleaning products, because that's what I really care about with people. And I care about people's overall health. You know, my wife and I, we really focus on kind of the four areas of health, financial, spiritual, physical, and mental. And most people don't think that physical and financial wellness matters until one of them you're almost without. Right. And then you realize all the money in the world ain't going to bring me back from stage four cancer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the all the health in the world, if I'm not financially taking care of my responsibilities, is going to make me live a better life that I can enjoy the way I want to, right? You mm-hmm. need both. And mm-hmm. so it's really important that we we're mindful of that. I, I love marketing. I think marketing is awesome. <laughs> I also think that we got to be mindful about they're in business to make money. Right. They're in business to sell a product. Mm-hmm. If you never turn the bottle over and ever just ask the question of yourself, if you never challenge yourself on that front, mm-hmm. you you can't be mad at what what your life is like in your life. Right. Right. And yeah, is it of all the things that have added up over time? For sure. I mean, it's all about education and it's all about knowing just like when you when, you know, you you had your experience where you almost died. You're like, okay, unfortunately, it took that to shake you enough to want to move forward. And and fortunately, you had um, she was your fiance at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. So so you had your fiance who was like, hey, babe, you know what? I want a wedding. I want children. I want them with you. And we're we're about to live together for a long time. For you know, for you guys to find that out, but for other for others, they don't need to wait for this to happen. They don't. They just knowing the fact that being aware of the fact that toxic products 
over and over again piled up because we use them for cleaning. We use them for doing laundry. We use them in our hair. We use them to, for the house to smell good. We use them for our bodies, you know, like our skin to be soft, right? We, we right. dye our hair and all these things, they're all pile up, yeah. you know? Um, sulfates and phosphates, some people don't know what those are. Mm -hmm. um, they are in a lot of shampoos. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? to us so um i am not the expert on sulfates and phosphates <laughs> from what from what i know just because of the things that i pay attention to and we hang around a lot of diets clinicians and skin people and all of that what it does is over time so like for your hair when your shampoo right ladies you've used a shampoo before that you threw away immediately after your first use because it dried your hair out right mm -hmm. or it really did something terrible it broke your ends off or your scalp, right? Whatever the case may be, that's a result of those types of things inside of that product, right? That instead of the natural oils taking, you know, hold, it, you know, totally pulled everything out. You have to be mindful of um, unsafe chemicals in the everyday types of products that you're using every single day, because mm -hmm. they all add up. And again, your skin is breathing. Your skin is breathing. It is breathing just as you and I take in air every day. Mm -hmm. And on your head, you keep pumping toxic chemicals. And by the way, anything you put on your skin ends up in your bloodstream. Right, in right. Yeah. In 20 so, seconds? 26 seconds. 26 seconds. That's a, that's a Facebook story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, and, it, and so, it, now granted, we're not here to scare everybody. So I want your audience to know, like, we're not here. Like we're not we're not here to scare everybody. Like whoa, we're, we're here like, to whoa. educate. No, but I mean, like yeah. it's education. Oh, okay. yeah. And just to start thinking, right? Just to be mindful that hey, you know what? Um, there there are ways that I can go about making sure I and my children and my family are healthier, and I don't have to just resort to what's cheaper and more convenient for me to get. Now, granted, convenient. Everybody's doing everything convenient. You're watching mm -hmm. this. So watch it on right. your phone, <laughs> people, right but the idea is is that sometimes one little extra step is worth your overall health and that's for sure for sure so in other words talking about this right i know that you have some um do it yourself right cleaning products yeah. or things like that so let's talk about that and then also i would like us to talk about when we go to the store to shop for say um, green or, or non-toxic, there was this statistic, right? They said the um, manufacturers are not obligated to add, you know, the the what they add in there. And also the products that say they're green are not ne necessarily green. So how do we smart shop? You know, how do we go? Oh, we're going to go, we're going to do this, we're going to take it little by little, and we're going to replace this but for this. How do we shop that? So I want us to cover those two things. But first, let's do the DIY. And actually, actually, Chris, before then, I'm going to say hello to Callie. Hi, Callie. Thank you for being here. Fulgens, hey, thank you for being here. And Aaron Music, hello. Thank you so much for being here, too. Um, all right, Chris, so go ahead and talk to us about some of the yeah, products. So the first thing is a simple... Um, uh, I've got it written here, a simple all-purpose cleaner, okay? And then I'll, and then at the end, I'll kind of, I'll answer your second part there, uh, Anna. So first, you can use one part white vinegar, uh, one part water, one part lemon rind, and rosemary sprigs. You okay. can actually use that as an all-purpose cleaner. Okay, okay. So in there, in there, what is the disinfectant? So the dis, so most people don't realize a lemon uh, any citric acid is a natural acid that will actually help break down anything, right? Okay. So that lemon rind has actually got the agent, so to speak, in it, right? Enzymes and acids are he they're healthy, right? Okay. It's not like a, a bad thing. Although um, there's non-healthy uh, ones too that are normal, like arsenic. It's a normal, natural occurring thing. Oh Jesus but Lord! Lemon okay, rind yeah. Actually, break stuff down without like eroding your skin. Mm. Right, like without causing you harm. So that's why. And we eat lemons, right? Right. So again, just think in terms of if I can eat it, 
probably okay. Right? Yeah, well, Chris, not, not necessarily true because we can eat a lot of things that are not good for us, like sugar and candy and all that stuff and, oh. and bread meat and all that. So, so that's... Yeah, we're not using sugar in our cleaner products. <laughs> I'm just saying, like... <laughs> Right. Like, okay, but um, yeah, that's that's great. So then we can use that and we can supplement the rosemary oil for any other, right? That right. we okay, okay, so then you have it. Do it yourself, all purpose clean it, and we're gonna add it so here. Let's talk about uh, the glass cleaner. So, if okay, you want to switch out using an ammonia field <laughs> product that you normally get from the grocery store, yes, really simple two cups of water, a half cup of white uh, or cider vinegar. A fourth of a cup of rubbing alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. Just a 70% concentration, which most of them are, no matter where you get them from. And a one or two drops of orange essential oil. Mm. Okay. Mix I'm already that smelling up. that. So most people, you know, heard of or have used essential oils at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. But you can use those to scent, right? Uh, anything like like this as far as a glass cleaner, mm -hmm. right? You're not, you know, it's not dangerous. It's okay. You can actually put that in there. One or two drops is going to be enough because essential oils are pretty potent. So you don't have mm -hmm. to like sit there and right. pour it. You don't have to do all that. You know, okay. <laughs> uh, but one or two drops, you'll be pretty good to go. Mix that up and you actually have your own glass cleaner that you can actually use. Mm hmm. That is great because I mean, like, I'm on the the Windex. Man, whenever someone was cleaning, I got an immediate headache, and they mm -hmm. don't. And, and they're very generous with the spraying, so they go like, oh, sh oh, sh you know, like That's I'm like. Because, um, there's ammonia and chlorine. And here, here's the thing about ammonia. This is something that most people realize too. Ammonia is not. It doesn't like walk around with this big scent to it. Mm -hmm. What most people also don't realize is that if you put on like um, I forget those uh, glowing those night vision goggles that you can see what's in the air. They do this <laughs> like at hotels, right? Yeah, you yeah. The black on. light, blue light, you whatever. Actually, yeah, that's right. The black light. If you could put that on as a glasses, you would see this wavy line in the air after you sprayed uh, something with ammonia in it. That's the ammonia still sticking around. That's what you're breathing in. Wow. Right? Yeah. And, and most people don't think about like, all right, hmm, what is this doing to me long term? Because mm -hmm. again, just because now for you, you had an immediate reaction to it because your mm -hmm. body's obviously sens sens sensitive to it. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But some people think, well, I didn't respond. That's okay. But we also know, and this, this is something I've talked to so many people about. If you had a, a baby, you know, a young baby, baby that's just crawling, right? Mm -hmm. The moment you said, I'm going to clean the bathroom and I'm using uh, grocery store cleaning products that are harsh chemicals based with in them, you would not let that baby crawl in that same room that you were using that cleaning products for. You would. And that is so true. That is so true. The thing is, but the, for the thing is, like, we don't think about it that way for us. Oh. We're over there thinking about it for them, right? But at the same time, right? We're like, okay, wait, but it's still in the air, even, even if the kid is not crawling. It's still in the air, it's still sprayed. Like right. you spray that nozzle and you know, it's, it's too same late. Thing with like secondhand smoke, right? Consider yes. toxic chemicals like, okay, just because you're over there, it's mm -hmm. still in the air, right? Mm -hmm. If we're in the same house and that's happening, secondhand smoke is real. Right. Just like these chemicals and constantly using them all over the place, it's real, right? Right. And there are companies who are actually out there, no, they don't advertise like the big boys, no, they don't spend 2.7 million dollars on a Super Bowl commercial to tell you that they exist, but there are companies out there that actually have really great products. And by the way, um, you don't have to you don't have to be a, a, a genius or a scientist or a couponer, right, <laughs> to know a good deal. Right? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we think, oh, that's for the extreme person. No, I just personally I look at things nowadays, especially. And by the way, I was not the guy who only one time near death experience I woke up, I almost died seven times in my life from asthma related issues. Oh my God. Do you know? So is, I'm a human though. I didn't get it. I didn't go do the research. Sometimes it takes somebody like my wife. Sometimes in a man's world, it takes a woman to step in and start helping him realize, brother, we got to do something different because what you're doing ain't making a whole lot of sense. Right? Uh, I will say 99% of the time that is true there, Chris. Moment <laughs> truth, all facts. So, you know, what I realize is, but unfortunately, right, 
if you, th- if, you know, single mamas out there, mm-hmm. you're busy. You got enough to worry about with the schedules you keep, the job, picking the kids up from this and that to try to now figure out, okay, yeah, I know there's the toxic chemicals, but I don't know where else to look, right? Like, there's a lot to constantly consider. But what I always say is, um, I'd rather you prevent what I almost died from Mm -hmm. than wait until you have that moment for you to wake up and want to change. For sure. Most people only change for two reasons in life. Mm -hmm. Voluntarily or they get voluntold. (laughs) <laughs> but one one lose weight like i did right uh-huh. chose i didn't have any health issues i just look i wanted to do that right mm-hmm. or you get voluntold like i did nearly dying from an asthma attack and something got to change mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right That's so so you don't so you don't have you don't experience asthma anymore you're you don't need to do vet medicine or i have greatly reduced my problems and when i say greatly like i just went to the doctor uh recently because there was was three things i did that helped make my asthma triggers drop to dog on near zero one changed out my cleaning products two changed out the products the uh, actually i'm sorry included uh a multivitamin into my daily diet because most people don't even realize and we could have a whole nother segment around food but we're all pretty much malnourished because of the amount of chemicals that are even in the food that we're buying from grocery stores. Mm-hmm. I because believe that. We control the color, the size, mm-hmm. the thickness of everything based on chemicals while it's at the actual farm. That's a whole for other sure. concept. Yeah, for sure. I, I believe all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I changed out the cleaning products, added a, a multivitamin, and then I messed around and got in shape. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. three, it really reduced and when i went to the doctor last week for my checkup um all of my levels were exactly where they needed to be for my age of 38 congratulations now, that is great thank you um that would have not happened i can guarantee you four or five years ago mm-hmm. without some intentionality right um Everything from, oh God, I've, I've experienced it all. Uh, barely can walk up a, ste- a flight of steps and not mm-hmm. be in a full-blown asthma attack. Scared to go to sleep. Um, don't want to go outside when it's hot because I'm in fear. Like I've been, listen, I've been, I've been back and forth. Mm-hmm. And until I made those simple changes. First of all, I didn't even know I could potentially try to lose weight because I was too afraid to work out because right. I thought I was going to have an asthma. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm I'm so happy for you, you know, and for, and for your family that you made that switch and that you reduced your, I mean, your pre-existing condition because that's the money that you would have been spending, you know, buying yeah. all those med and products. Healing, yeah. This is a good example to help people understand because we think of medicine and we go, oh, I just need it. Mm-hmm. Let me give you an example. I was so bad off, one inhaler is about 200 puffs of albuterol, okay? Most mm. people who have asthma, uh, asthma know about albuterol. It's the rescue inhaler, right? Mm-hmm. I was going through two or three of them a month. Oh my God. I want you to think about that for a second. I have, since I made those simple changes, I may refill a prescription once a year. And the only reason why I do is so that I have it. And two, because now I train really hard with my trainer, um, I typically will take a puff just as a preventive before I start my workout. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about this for a second. I went from 600 on average puffs a month to barely refilling it to the point that when I went to my doctor, he's always, you are in some really great shape. How did you do that? When I told him, and he and he used to push me. My doctor mm-hmm. used to push me all this. Chris, you you either you gonna you gonna figure this out or we gonna have an alter alternative. Mm-hmm. And I figured it out. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people, listen, I'm not I'm not special. I just knew I wanted to quit suffering. And I think sometimes we accept suffering mm-hmm. as a part of life. And I'm like, right. no, 
that's not reality. You right. can actually do something about some most of the stuff that we're dealing with. Question yeah. is, is the pain enough in your life that you're willing to? All right, is he the pain of pleasure? That's the only. That's what it, yeah. That's what it is. And there yeah, that's where it is. And there are also some some people who believe that, for example, oh no, that that runs in my family. Um, so. Yeah. That's, you know, that's something that I cannot take. Yes, you might run in your family, but that, that doesn't mean that you have to suffer from it. You know, right. that doesn't. And that means oh. that you have to take precautions to not let that be a statistic for yourself, yes, you so. know? So, yeah. So, you, so you, if you have, like, you, you have asthma, right? And, and just because you have asthma doesn't mean that your son has, has to suffer uh, from asthma at the same level that you do. Right. Nope. It could be. So. So that's. Yeah, that's I I'm congratulations because I was yeah. my yeah. wife uh, used to suffer from acid reflux really bad, mm. really bad. She no longer has those problems anymore because she made some simple changes, diet and to things that she was doing that said, OK, I can reduce what's happening. One, a lot of people who suffer with acid reflux don't have enough digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. that are naturally and they don't have enough probiotics in their gut. So a lot of times people don't like talking about gut health. Mm -hmm. uh, I always tell people you can either talk about it out loud and be uncomfortable or you can be uncomfortable the rest of your life with your gut problems. Right. right. And, right. and I mean, like in the health, literally, I mean, I'm going to repeat this because we, we know it. The health is in the gut. It, 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 our health is in the gut. It's it, it, there it's, and in the column that's because that's what that's, that's what that's the plumbing right there. That's the way you know. Good point. Good so, way to put yeah. it. It's the plumbing. If you don't yeah. take care of your plumbing, I don't care how great you think you feel. You're not running optimally, and that was something that I learned with asthma. Mm -hmm. I had suffered so long with asthma, I didn't know how bad I was until I started doing better, and I was like, "Geez, I didn't even know I could live this way. I didn't know I could." <laughs> I could enjoy life to this level. I, cause I just always was afraid to do it. Cause I just mm -hmm. thought I'll never, I, I was living in fear. Right. Mm -hmm. I just thought, my, I mean, my, anybody my, would, because you're like, okay, I'm going to exert myself and then I'm going to die because I can't breathe regularly. How am I going to breathe working out? But no. yeah. Yeah. And my trainer kicks my butt and I really don't like him this week. Cause he's been, Oh my God, he's not. But I'm, I appreciate him because he's really, honestly, I tell people there's only a few people in my name, my life that I can say have probably really saving my life. And he's definitely one of them. He's Aww. changed a lot of things about the way I look at life and um, made it so that my wife and I, like I always tell people, you know, for married people, you know, when it comes to your health and fitness, um, if you're going to suffer, suffer through getting it right. It makes you, it, I think it just adds that other thing to your marriage when when the two of you are working together towards um, a goal of either losing weight or, you know, gaining whatever, whatever your goal is. I, I think doing it together is just, it's one of the better things. One, you know, you got support in the house. Two, you can hold each other accountable like nobody else can. <laughs> and, and, and I think three, to see your spouse achieve their goals, man, that's that's like, that's like the best thing on the planet. For sure, for sure, doing it together. I mean, that's that's must be yeah, really, really cool. I I I I agree with you. I I'm so 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 happy for you guys for real because you know doing all of that and then also you guys work together on a on a little side gig that I will let you just talk about briefly. And if people would like to um you know get a hold of you, then you can share your information. But before we go there, for all of you who are watching, thank you so much if you're catching the replay. Hope this is of value to you. Leave us a comment and let us know if you have any questions. And also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, you just have to send us an email to officially unofficial tv at gmail.com. We also come every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook and on YouTube. So here you go. All right, Chris. So go ahead and talk to us about what it is that you can do and how they can, uh, you know, people can reach you and talk about, uh, you know, yeah. whatever they um, want to do, you know, whatever their goals are, uh, you know. That's right. Yeah. And thank you for the opportunity. And what I would say is, uh, so my wife and I provide health and wellness education all across America. Uh, we have been teaching, we've been really focused on it the last three and a half years on, um, 
teaching people about the dangers of toxic chemicals in the home, teaching people about there are other resources out there, why you might, might want to start removing, you know, products that have certain things. And again, I'm not here to tell you and convince you or make you commit to something you're not already doing. You're already buying toothpaste, soap, laundry detergent, deodorant, and toothpaste. <laughs> okay, I'm not <laughs> here to tell you to do that. Right. What I am saying is in those same products that you're buying, if you ever turned over that label and really understood what was in it, you probably would make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And so that's what my wife and I help families do all around the country. Make a better decision because it's the things that you're constantly doing every day that are that are uh, contributing to your overall health. And we just like helping people be able to find better resources into something that's more safe and more affordable. And at the end of the day, you sleep better at night because you realize, wow, there's a better way out here and I just might have not known it. And so that's part of the education that we provide. If anyone is interested in uh, learning more from us, feel free. Um, I'm sure uh, for those on the replay, you'll see my information attached to the same video. And uh, you can also find me on uh, IG, on Instagram, the Christopher Williams. You can find me on Facebook, Christopher Williams uh, as well. And I'd definitely be more than happy to help any family who wants to just make their journey to the wellness one step closer. Yes, man, that was that was great. Look at you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And your wife is really, is really awesome to talk to. And uh, she relates a lot to, uh, you know, because she's a mom, you know, and she she knows how, how it is and all these things. And then you as well. So you guys make a great team. That's 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 great. So um, we will, I will just say like I am, I am blessed. I married up. I'm telling you right now, I married up. I got one of the best women God ever created. She's an incredible entrepreneur. She's smart. She's savvy. Um, but one of the things that she has a heart for is a lot of mamas out there who are at home, mm -hmm. who are either at home by choice or they got the you know opportunity because their husband was able to bring them home or whatever the case may be. But any mama who's um, trying to figure this life out, my wife has a bead of a heart for you because she knows what it was like. She was a single mother for 10 years before we got together. She understands how hard that journey is mm -hmm. while also trying to maintain your life uh, for your children. And so for any mother who is, is trying to to um, to figure this out <laughs> at the same time, uh, keep keep herself healthy. Right. Because mama's mm -hmm. lives until the last dying breath. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one of the things I believe in is that I think we need to reinvest into our mothers because without that, none of us would be here anyway. So she for sure, for way. sure. So, uh, she's dope, but I'm not gonna keep talking about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, you should say uh, Gugu Gaga over your wife, which is amazing. This is great, but we will have her on the show also. Uh, we, yeah. we have to schedule her to talk about that and you know, you know, the single mamas and things that and ways that she could help them out and the opportunities that are out there available for them. So we're definitely going to have that. We're going to have her come in and we're going to add your information to the comment section, just like you mentioned, so that people can contact you if they have any questions. So now, um, Chris, do you have any last minute, um, I don't know, advice for when we go out shopping, right? When we do our laundry. So, let me ask you this question. I know you said that you were a tied man, right? Before all of you made your change. Um, is the other one that says like free and clear and all of that, is that, is that true? Yeah, well, I will tell you, there are some that do have um, natural things in them. But here's the thing I always want people to realize. Mm -hmm. um, they can have a quarter of an ounce of eucalyptus <laughs> and market it as it's got it's naturally uh scented yeah okay you turn and read the rest of the you're like what is this stuff right right, right. so it's, again it's great marketing <laughs> right it right doesn't, it doesn't mean that it didn't have it in there it just means that little bit gave mm -hmm. them the automatic right to say yo we got it right that's um, how it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. yep. So what percentage would be a good percentage, for example, if we go on? Like, what's a good percentage? Because that's what it is. It's great that you and your wife do what you do because you're educating us and what to look for, right? But, like, mm -hmm. what percentage is a good percentage? You know, what is – I'm going to go there and I, I'm going to be like, okay, so this is 1%. Or it smells good. I mean, I'm going to go for it. 
I mean, I mean, obviously <laughs> the ideal answer, Anna, would be a hundred percent, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if we could, but I, 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 you know, I don't know if I, I know the the exact percentage that would be would be good because there's natural um, uh, toxins too in the in the planet, right? Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't. <laughs> so so that doesn't mean that it's it's not there. I'm just saying I think um, sometimes when you look at the back of the label of a product if you can tell and see like if you see skull and crossbones all right we might <laughs> you might want to x that product out right of right product, right <laughs> um you know it's funny there's there's toothpaste out there for kids that say do not swallow right right if I make the toothpaste strawberry flavored for children what do you think they gonna do Exactly. And you know what? For that, I changed to like um, fluoride free toothpaste, you know, a while ago, like when they were because I'm like, why can you I mean, like, OK, it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's like and there's another and there's another thing, Chris, about um, there's, you know, like I, I, I take a lot of like supplements like parsley and and things like that, right? So there was one brand that in the back of it, it read, it's known to cause cancer in the state of California, mm -hmm. right? But they're selling it in, they're still selling it. They're still selling, selling it, it. In, and I was buying it until yeah. I read the label, right? And right. I was referring, uh, I was like suggesting my daughter to drink this as well. So I was, I'm like, and so I look back and I'm like, halt stop stop and then she returned it but it's like read the label right yeah and uh for vitamins things of that nature here's what i tell people um a lot of them do have synthetics in them which means that they become foreign objects when introduced to the body which means the body can't break it down and basically there's nothing it can do most of your um, well-known brands of multivitamins give you only about maybe 20% at the most absorption rate. Absorption rate means how much of this multivitamin, when I swallow it, is mm -hmm. my body actually going to use, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Most, the top tiers, most of them are only like 20%. Um, I've seen... Um, all natural ones of things that you can actually pronounce 85% absorption rate. Mm. And people can tell the difference because they were, Oh snap, this is actually real. Right. Stuff, right? Like they can see the difference. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's the difference. Right. I, and I think again, it, because we're so busy, well, because we, we make ourselves so busy and we mm -hmm. don't have time. To I, I always tell people you can say that until you have an experience. Mm -hmm. And then at some point you, you're going to do what you need to do. Right. And yeah. Like, and I yeah. think for all of us, um, taking two seconds to really inquire about if you're taking a multivitamin and there's nothing that you feel that is of value, mm -hmm. you're probably taking a lot of synthetics. Right. It's yeah. Probably just, it's marketed well. Now I'm not, yeah. I'm not mad at the marketing, but that doesn't mean that it's, got all the right things in your body to perform because most people think, well, I don't need a multivitamin. Actually, you do because yeah. the food that you eat is no longer adding the right amount of nutritional value that it used to 20, 30 years ago right. because we're pumping our farms full of chemicals. Today. And that is and that is one thing, and we're almost at the end of our show, Chris, has been amazing, but that is one thing that people usually come back with when we're talking about oh, you know what, now we're changing this and the vitamins and organic foods and non-toxic. Oh, this we hear from older generations, right? They go, well, I didn't have to do that when I was, you know, younger. I'm like, of course, that's amazing. Of course, you didn't have to do it because the products were not like that before. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're not pumping all of this pesticides in our farms before, right? right? Because we're doing all of this. And then when there's a farm that is taking, because... Organically farming is more expensive. It is more expensive. You have to pay more attention to those, right? So then, of course, they're, they're going to be more expensive. And they're like, they're, I'm not going to pay more money for the same thing, you know? So we're going to have a whole conversation on that. But just like you mentioned oh. before, i rather spend the money now than when I'm older. I don't have to, like, spend the money on medicine and... and mm -mm. No. 
Choose your heart, as they say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, first of all, it's not more expensive because the more we say that, and I used to be guilty of this, I used to mm-hmm. say the same thing, but I didn't mind spending $5 on a, buck, a thing of Starbucks. Right. <laughs> Just change your budget. That's all. Just, right. That's a, whole, that's a whole financial wellness conversation. We can talk about that later. Right. You that's know what? That's true. Oh my gosh, Chris. That's true. I mean, we can stay here for like a five hour. <laughs> right. That's, that's, a, whole, oh, that's, that's a different soapbox. So I'm, I'm, I can be on with that one. Well, Chris, I'm telling Chris, thank you so much, so, so much for being here and for your information, for the knowledge that you shared with us. And hopefully this was um, of um, help to you guys learning this if you have any questions like we said before please just write it in the comments either chris or myself will answer them for you but um chris is saying i'm gonna i'm gonna pass the screen to you if there's anything that you want to say last minute before we sign off hey i just want to say for any family out there who's trying to figure this health and wellness thing out and you want more information feel free to let us know my website uh my contact information will be uh below this interview And for those of you who are looking for somebody to connect with, who's doing some incredible stuff, who's sharing this type of information on a regular basis, you should be talking to Anna because she's always bringing really great content. And this is a place where you get to learn uh, and grow and we can all build a better community. Yes, there's a lot of negativity out there, but this is not one of those places. So I would definitely say make sure that you tune in, subscribe to her. You can also... Uh, find her on IG and uh, Facebook as well and on YouTube. Oh, look at you. You're my marketer now. Yes, I love it. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. And yes, I, I, I love it. I love all of this information that you have shared. And we will get back with some more information. We have so many things to talk about because we can talk about now the farming and food and we can also talk about uh resources for single moms so we have so many things to talk about you guys stay tuned for this information like we said before every thursday 1 p.m eastern standard time right here at officially unofficial thank you so much for watching you guys bye